I mean, it's difficult for me actually to start after hearing Matt's wonderful British accent and now my bad English, <laughs> but I try to do my best. Uh, well, I have the impression to start with huh, that um, when talking about uh, the Anthropocene, what we heard also today and yesterday, it is this is to a considerable part about concepts. I mean, yesterday morning at the Symposium of the Anthropocene Working Group, for example, we could witness this, this kind of big negotiation of the concept that is uh, going on since a while, uh, since the group is considering a possible formalization, most of the people know, uh, of the term Anthropocene. And now we, but we are discussing here also two concepts, you know, technology on the one hand and technosphere on the other hand, uh, concepts that are also heading somehow toward a thought or what could be something like a thought of the Anthropocene. Um, and I, with this I don't want to say, oh, it's only or merely about concepts, what we are doing here. Um, to the contrary, I mean, um, a concept always, I would say, answers to a problem, although it's never a completed answer, it's something like a flash uh, on something that is problematic. And um, concepts belong to a capacity of problem solving that is a capacity, a crucial capacity of the living. Uh, I don't say the human, of, let's say of the living. Um, and uh, in, in this sense, concepts are very close actually already to technology, which is also a certain ability to solve problems. And at least in all this, what is implicit here is kind of epistemology of the, or a new epistemology of the problematic, I would say. Um, and with this, I guess we are already deep into the question of how to think uh, the Anthropocene since, uh, or how to, how to think and rethink science in the Anthropocene because, uh, I mean, we are, or we, we are done uh, or uh, we have to undo actually, no, we have to undo the modernist epistemology of science and uh, the, thinking about the problematic is is one possible way i guess having said this i just just would start in asking you so what do you think is the problematic the concept of techno sphere is uh, reacting to answering to and so on yes well the <coughs> The, the technosphere, um, which I'll de describe in, in, in a moment, is um, kind of my way of, uh, of constructing a concept that I can deal with, uh, try to understand and analyze science on a scientific basis. Because I have a scientific background, not a, not a philosophical, not a philosophy background. And uh, so when I first heard, uh, became aware of the Anthropocene, uh, uh, was probably in the mid-2000s somewhere. Uh, and uh, it seemed like a very rich um, idea that with a lot of possibilities latent in it to uh, to bringing together some of my previous interests in the geological world with the obvious importance of humans and human institutions. But uh, the question was how to approach it. And um, mm -hmm. uh, so from a scientific point of view, one thing we often do, and which I did in this case, was to try to think of the, the uh, the object of interest, shall we say, which I would take to be, you could call by various names, but it would really be the sum of, uh, of humans um, and, and their technology uh, in kind of all its, all its ramifications and, and all of its parts. So it, it would include individuals, it would include uh, uh, 
you know, these bottles of water on the table. It would include the internet. Uh, it would include art museums and the art within the art museums. And basically, we're talking about civilization. And when you add it all up, the sum total of all these human endeavors and impacts. And so I said, well, OK, that seems a little tough to deal with. Um, but let's, But true. one thing we often do in science is to try to pick a theme or, or a perspective that if you can say something, that, that, that where you can say something about the problem of interest, knowing that you won't be able to, to address all problems, but to say something that might be pertinent and relevant and maybe have some utility. And um, so I'm taking a system approach mm -hmm. to doing it. So the technosphere is then my name for this system of, of, of humans plus technology plus, uh, well, including all the aspects of that that you could imagine, I think. And uh, uh, the reason we do, uh, the reason I did that is because uh, if, you, if you have a system that you can define well enough that um, then there's kind of a, I would say a, a, a procedure or a, or, a, or a kind of an approach to that that we often take, and that is to try to uh, try to derive some or to to um, create some rules or principles that would apply to it. So the system. So then, but what is the? So this kind of two steps. What mm -hmm. is the system? What are the concepts? And so uh, the um, so the system, which or the, which is is my. So, so let me tell you what my concept is now. It's, it's the system, but what does that really mean? And the system is, is a system is a set of parts which uh, collectively um, uh, exhibit some function, which collectively do something in the world uh, that can be relatively briefly described. Okay, and that's actually an important caveat um, which uh, I don't know whether we'll try to unpack that or unfold that later on. But, um, and then, then well, like, what function does it have? What are, you, what are you talking about? And all systems that do something in the world that can be described relatively, relatively briefly, these are all energy-consuming systems because you can't do anything without mm -hmm. cons consuming energy. And... Um, the one thing that they all do, they consume energy, but even more fundamental than that, what such systems do is survive. That is, they have survived up to the point at which we're having this discussion because otherwise they wouldn't be around for us to discuss. Okay, so that, that's kind of a what's called a selection effect. Um, and so you say, well, don't you, you you've kind of biased the problem already by, select, by selecting a certain set of systems. But really, that selection criterion contains all the systems that we're likely to find interesting uh, or even to be able to identify, and including, including the technosphere. So that's my, that's my concept of, uh, that I want to deal with. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, and I've purposely <laughs> formulated this concept in a way that um, uh, wh wh where you don't really know what the system is except that it survives. It has been so. I mean, the technosphere is, was here yesterday. Civilization yeah. was here but yesterday. The interesting it was here thing is that ago. you call it, I mean, as a geologist, of course, that's the interesting approach to say, okay, a geologist is approaching the question of technology and he speaks of a f of a sphere. Techno, uh, not of technology, but of the emergence, or I don't know how to call it. Mm -hmm. And the question would be then, when would you date this? Um, uh, the emergence of something like a technosphere as opposed to what? Not opposed, but yeah. uh, supplement yeah. to the atmosphere, the lithosphere. I mean, what is, yeah, that's, that's the interesting approach to me. And what is the difference yeah. to these other spheres? Um, as, as kind of a convenient choice, historically, geology has deconstructed, shall we say, the, the world into, into spheres. Mm -hmm. 
um, at least the surface part of the world. So you have the atmosphere, and the sphere part just means that it's round. Mm -hmm. You know, that it basically most places you go, you find it. So if we go to the other side of Berlin, we'll find the atmosphere is still there, and you know, <laughs> and you go to wherever. Um, and then the hydrosphere is another one. The water yeah, is fairly right widely, there. widely distributed. And um, these are also dynamic spheres, like the technosphere. They consume energy. They're highly organized. Um, they have parts that are interact with one another, um, just like the technosphere does. You know, we're we interact with with these things, and I'm interacting with you, and we're interacting with the audience, and uh, the molecules in the in the water are mm. interacting with their neighbors. And, and so on. Um, the lithosphere, the actual hard crust of the Earth, is a, is an organized um, system that does something. It, it does it very slowly. So if you walk outside, we wouldn't we wouldn't see it. Um, so that I think that was my geological uh, background that led me to kind of naturally that is without much uh, mental opposition in my own head to <laughs> to calling it a sphere. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it would. It, it, well, it could have it could have any uh, any other name. Either, um, maybe the word anthro should be in there. But I pr oh, so the other yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the other point that your question raises, and I'm going to put this back on you in a minute, but um, is well, like is, this is the Anthropocene project. So you did mention people, but why not call it the Anthrosphere? Because we're trying to understand something about the the nature of, the constitution of, the behavior of, the, you know, whatever word you want, of of a very complex combination of, of elements, which includes people, and basically includes all, all the people in it. So why not call it the Anthroposphere? Mm -hmm. And the reason I don't call it the Anthroposphere is because of a term that I found in, in your writing, which I found really to to powerfully um, underline my own uh, my own impression of <clears throat> of of what is going on in the Anthropocene and that I was try I'm trying to get out through the an analysis of the technosphere was the uh, was the anthropic illusion mm -hmm. and and then my interpret now I might have interpreted you wrong Eric but uh, my interpretation of the an anthropic illusion was that it's natural for humans to kind of put themselves at the center at the center of things and when we think of uh, all the, the climate problems and other environmental problems we usually think of these as well these are due to human impact and of course at some level they're due to human impact <clears throat> but i think there are many other things going on in the <clears throat> in the world that 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 um uh embed humans Within them, and humans are 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 not really acting in, completely in, in, independently and, and and as free agents in, in doing these things. But there's much larger forces at loose in the world. These are the forces of the technosphere, but that are um, that that would make using the phrase uh, anthroposphere a little bit misleading, mm -hmm. and then maybe tech, technosphere is a little bit misleading too. Except that I'm, I'm, I'm happy to define people as elements of technology if we, if we get there, um, which I don't know how well, well that would go over in some quarters. But, uh, but you know, as I'm, as I'm talking about the, the technosphere, all the time I'm talk, thinking about techno-ecology. And so I, I, I wonder if, um, so, so, how, so if, if tech, if you have an e ecological system in biology, you usually have an e you often think of some ecosystem that mm -hmm. you might have in mind. So I wonder if if, what, if if there's some corresponding system-like thing that would correspond to your techno-ecology. Yeah, the good, good thing is that I can now say after reading your word that the technosphere is the corresponding thing <laughs> yeah, that well, the techno-ecology refers to uh, in a way. I mean... Uh, I, I come to this in a minute. I just want to, to take up one point. You, yeah. the, the place of the human, as you said. Okay, you didn't. I'm glad that you didn't call it anthroposphere. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean um, that uh, uh, that we have to cross out 
the position of the human, on the contrary, but to reformulate it. And uh, in your concept, that's exactly what's <laughs> happening. Uh, because you say, okay, humans, that's the interesting point, you say humans are part of technology. No? I, I, uh, I mean, and part of the anthropo what I call the anthropocenic illusion, the anthropocene illusion of Deutsch in German, uh, part of this anthropocenic illusion uh, was, first of all, the kind of, um, of concentration of all agency uh, on the human. But the, the, the paradox is that this, uh, that, uh, this concentration led us to the complete contrary situation. It led to an exp unseen, uh, or maybe not unseen, w talking with a geologist, I, don't, I shouldn't mention um, the word unseen, but uh, it caused a kind of an explosion uh, of agency, of non-human agency, <laughs> and so yeah. uh, and it 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 it, it showed. Uh, uh, and what 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 is what is happening today is that uh, uh, this uh, 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 this disenchantment. We are witnessing the disenchantment of the anthropocenic illusion because of, of the, the, the di distributed agencies we start uh, to, to witness uh, more and more. Um, and uh, what this makes necessary is uh, a reformulation of the place of the human. It's not, uh, technology is not something uh, it's not even, I would go so far and say, it's not an invention of the human. It's not, uh, of course, uh, in an instrumental sense, not a means to an end. That's a modernist position, position to think of technology as at, of the human, as, as part of the autonomy of the human. Uh, and what you are doing with your concept, it's you inverse uh, uh, the thing, uh, the story, and say, you say that... Um, Mm. The techno technology has kind of autonomy, but the human um, is part, or humans are part of uh, of this uh, technology, and uh, so that's a descender position of the human. Okay, and we can later go on and, and ask what 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 could this what could this mean? Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I. To my, to my mind, in, in my opinion, yeah. you have e exactly expressed the, the 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 problem that uh, it used to be, and I think uh, correct me if I have, have the wrong impression, but from uh, uh, you know from re from reading your papers and also just from otherwise reflecting that there there w there was a time at which. Actually, extending up to the present time in many places, I think where we people humans tended to think uh, of well, here's me, and here's something else, here's something external, has certain properties. We can describe these properties out of the form. It has a shape and maybe has mm -hmm. a certain use and in, in, in something. And so there's a separation kind of between between the, the human the human and the and the non-human um, either the human and the maid this would be the maid that constructed or the human and, and nature like 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 a rock and um, I, to, to, to me the anthrop if, if I, as I understand the Anthropocene illusion a little bit is that we there's a strong tendency to somewhat review the world in, in, in a little bit in that way that that there's us here and there's there's the world, and um, I, I think we would uh, most people would agree that's you know too too strong a uh, probably most people would would argue that they don't really view that separation as that black and white maybe um, but uh, I, I think the actual situation uh, as I understand it from your idea of technoecology which I would I would agree applies to a very similar kind of I come back to this co yeah. construct. Um, it's much more involuted or convoluted or turned in on itself, mm -hmm. um, so that uh, it is very hard to separate these these pieces um, 
to to you know to you know, analyze something, you, you you take it apart. And of course, you can always take apart something that's extended, but if to understand what is happening, you really have to. Um, Again, what your concept is is key to to doing that, and uh, and and I think the, as as expressed in the term human impact, I think that's you know that's kind of a starting concept you had. So if you had if you if you had the world out there and people in here and people are putting carbon dioxide into the air and uh, uh, causing a loss of good top topsoil mm. by certain agricultural practices and so on. I mean that's true, but that's kind of a proximate effect, you know. That basically anything that happens has some proximate effect, you know. Why why am I picking up this water bottle here? Well, maybe I maybe I'm thir thirsty, or maybe I'm nervous, you know. So I so I so I, uh, so I pick it up like that. But um, I wouldn't have picked it up like this if we weren't here on this, you know. If the nice people at uh, Haka Bay had not put it up here for us us to handle so if if it weren't for this institution if it weren't for the generosity of the you know the the german government or the 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 um funding funding this place or the people i know who knew me and had me invited then we wouldn't be i wouldn't be doing this so um yeah so there's a, so you have the proximate effect and and and, and proximately we are polluting the atmosphere and all these things but there's other forces that are less visible, that are further removed, that are more abstracted. Um, like like in an in an ecosystem where some little beetle can be going along mm. in the ecosystem, but there's all kinds of... Um, you know, the reason he has a certain life and a certain habit and 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 a certain ecological niche to kind of to, to live in is, is not just due to him, it's due to all the other stuff that, that's going on. And so when he, when the spider kind of climbs up his web, um, that web is situated in a certain part of a tree where there were things to attach, a, attach the web to. So, you know, so what, wh mm -hmm. what are all the forces that come into mm -hmm. determining the I spider going, going up? I mean, the, de the, de the thing is, I would agree uh, uh, to the point that you say, okay, uh, you problemize uh, separation. Huh? But yeah. what you mean are the modern separations, the big separations. Because like uh, just Martinez in the talk before said, uh, she, 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 she said, we, we, we are done in a way. We are done with, uh, with uh, uh, separating things. Uh, I think I'm not sure if this is if right. I would say uh, with Latour, the big separations, okay, they are a problem. But of course, we need to separate things. I but because yeah. without separation, there uh, no, no, right. cannot be any relation, yeah. and that That's brings right. me back to the to the question of, of, of to technology. I mean that technology means an ecology. If that's clear in ecology, like Timothy Morton says, without nature. Uh, what I want to stress with this is just to get the concept a bit away from from the bias it has that it has all ecology has always to do with natural systems. No, but yeah, yeah, uh, right. what, what, why I'm speaking? There are a lot of reasons to speak about the technical ecology. I can't go deeper into this now, uh, but but what I'm interested in is that. Uh, uh, to we, what we are witnessing is kind of an ecologization of thought. I mean, there are ecologies popping up everywhere. I mean, not natural ecologies, yeah, but yeah, yeah, ecologies yeah. of yeah. desire, ecologies of, I made a list, of participation, uh, ecologies of behavior, uh, of values, of cognition, of attention. You can make uh, a list of a thousand ecologies. Um, and I guess this is... This is kind of a, this is a, a symptom for a big eco ecologization of thought, uh, and this ecologization means uh, uh, is opposed. Uh, I would oppose with Latour to modernization. I mean, if modernization means okay, the fewer relations, the, the, or the better, because we want to control, or our emancipation as humans means to be able to control relations, and. And uh, ecologization, and that's really a, a term I like, uh, uh, and I take from Latour, is okay to, to, it's the opposite. It's to, to, ca 
care for relations, to, 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 to bring in uh, more relations. And this, uh, and, and to give relations another status. They are not just relating two entities, two terms, the relata or so, but to say relations are the originary thing in a way, constituting uh, uh, the entities or the, the terms or the relata uh, they relate. And I guess there's a very strong reason why we are doing this today, because we are at a certain point in history, what I would call a history of relationality. Even relationality has a history. And through technology, we moved in a certain stage of, 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 of relationality, of, of our awareness and of our possibility to think about relations, to formalize relations, to, 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 to become aware of them. And because uh, we are in the age or in an era of relational technologies, uh, the bad thing is that we have nowadays an economy that exploits uh, relations, that is based on the exploitation of relations. <laughs> but the good thing is, the good message is, uh, like in the pharmacology of, rel of, of the relation, we could say, that, that these technologies, they expose the whole issue of relations. And if you speak, if you speak about systems and explain the way you build systems, this is really, uh, I mean, the systems concept as such is a very important um, uh, issue of this stage of yeah. relationality, yeah. I would say. And therefore, just to make, the, now to close the, the parenthesis, therefore, because ecology is always about relations and it is the care of relations, inside, outside, and so on. Uh, I would say, therefore, I speak of a techno-ecology because uh, we are in this certain, uh, certain moment of the history of relationality that is implemented technologically that we start to think ecological on all levels, from micro to macro, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, so just, no, no, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, I, to, so, so first of all, with your c comment on uh, not wanting to get rid of the, of, of the direct proximate relationship with, with, with things, um, if you did that, if, 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 um, if you couldn't do that, then there wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to define a system with parts, because mm -hmm. parts are things that are sure. relatively, relatively distinct. So the question is, or, 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 or so then the goal would be to, to go from a bunch of distinct th things which have certain intrinsic properties to uh, a kind of a collective um, uh, system, if, if, if you will, that then exhibits or is the framework within which various relations between these parts live, live, live. Uh, or, or, or kind of define, define themselves. So, if, if I, so let me just back with that thought in mind. Let me just back up a minute to, to, sure. okay. So I have the system of the in, of the technosphere, and I want to take it in the direction that you're mm -hmm. going, uh, that that you are um, developing developing there. That if these systems are are, if the technosphere is a, is a system with a property. The thing that that system does is it it acts to survive. Then, what principles um, would uh, pertain to that system? Just a few simple principles that are not specific. So here's the here's the here's the the slight um, here's 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 the point at which uh it the, the the concept of relationship becomes a little harder to define within the technosphere but that um that from these principles which are not they're not specific otherwise we would be talking about a specific system sure. so they have to be sort of general principles and survival then so what is the first principle the first principle is survival 
that that this that w this system that we're talking about has to act as if it's to survive, and since that's basically true of all dynamic systems as we as we describe them, um, th that actually is a can be seen as a principle. Evolvement, you mean systems evolvement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, each if I have a property that applies to every system, and it, and every system that lasts long enough to have a, many internal time cycles and so on, so I haven't unpacked that too much. If that system is there to discuss, it knows how to survive. It has to figure out how to get energy. Okay, it has to yeah, figure yeah. out how to defend mm -hmm. itself. All this. So, and so the technosphere must, must be like that. And then what does that, what does that principle, and I call it a principle, not a special property, because you know, this, this bottle knows how to survive. You know, better not leak. For example, if 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 it if it leaked, then it would be thrown in the trash and go and be compacted or torn apart or something like that. There's certain things it has to do to survive, and the technosphere has certain things it has to do to survive. We don't have to ask what they are right now. But then, what about the parts within the technosphere? What kind of relationships do they have to have, which would include humans? What kind of relationships do they have to have uh, with each other? Um, human to human or human to non-human or non-human to non-human because we're not distinguishing because I'm trying to take a Copernican view mm. here where I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning but uh, that was implicit in my criticism of, of a human impact viewpoint is that puts humans at the center and so I center and, and, and if that were the starting point I think we would not get as uh, wouldn't get as complete a view of what the what the landscape was that we're that we're working on uh, on so to speak. Um, so then, if so, anyway, so these 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 parts, what what do they have to? What do, what does survival of the system to which they belong um, imply? And one of the things it implies is that these. Parts must be they're, they're 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 collectively operating to do something. That's what they're part of the why they're part of the system. They're helping the so system. they cooperate. They cooperate. Mean. Yeah, they co that's a nice they cooperate. Too. I would come back to co <laughs> cooperate. Yeah, um, yeah and, until we talk about why they cooperate. But mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, so they have to cooperate. They have to do something collectively to help this the system mm -hmm. to help support the system and. Um, so we just leave just there, there's there's various other such rules or principles, but we're just taking that one for the moment. Um, then then why why would they why would they they cooperate? And they are cooperating because that's 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 what a system is 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 the is the sum of the cooperation of its parts to some extent. And uh, they don't cooperate just out of the their out of goodwill necessarily. I mean this bottle here doesn't have any goodwill. Um, they cooperate because for one of several reasons. Either they're 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 forced to forced to cooperate, they're constrained. You know, so if you have a piston inside an, a cylinder in the engine of a car, it goes up and down like this if you have a reciprocating engine. It doesn't all of a sudden just go over there. You know, it, it has to stay here. Why does it stay here? Because that's the essence of a of that piston? No, it's forced to because a cylinder keeps it there. The cylinder is a part of the engine, is a part of the car. Otherwise, it, it turns would turn into a non-trivial machine. You, you know? it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, we're probably still at that level of trivial machines. But um, so constraint is, is is one reason, and this you know this doesn't go down to the floor because of the constraint of the of the table. So physical constraint is one, and uh, if the people in the auditorium here are are nice audience uh, wanted to leave suddenly, which I hope they don't. But where are you heading to now? They, 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 yeah, a pun, yeah. They would go out that, they would have to go out that door, or maybe there's some other doors. You can't just go out through the, through the wall. So, 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 this, so cooperation in the fact that all the people are here, one, one aspect of this is, is constraint. Another is incentive. For humans, you know, incentivize the bottle, incentive, incentivize the humans. They're here maybe because they have nothing else to do, or or because they want to, you know learn about some some aspect of uh, of, of the of the Anthropocene, or um, if we have if you have paid employees, maybe they don't want to be here, 
but they incentivize because they have a salary or they're incentivized by fear because they don't want to lose their job. If they don't do these things, they don't want to. Um, so there's all kinds of ways that um, we are, lo so, so we as humans are participate in the collectively, mm -hmm. uh, cooperative, we can call it cooperation, but it doesn't necessarily mean willing cooperation uh, in the support of this, support of this system. And um, uh, this is true for all parts or almost all parts. You can have broken, broken mm. parts, for example. And um, so then the question, and, and so there's, so there's, there's cooperation um, and there's communication because this, the, 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 a system is not things acting independently, it's things acting together. So they must have connections and they must be communicating. So it's communication and, con and control, really, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Communication and control sounds a little bit like some aspects of cybernetics, yeah. which I know is... I, I will sh for sure. I mean, that's the point now. You said, yeah. I, I had always understood, okay, that this move with system theory, what you're doing, and with complex mm -hmm. system yeah. theory, uh, is a move from, let's say, communication and control, uh, to put it with Wiener, uh, to communication and cooperation. That's mm -hmm. kind of, uh, I think, uh, uh, an important shift because all what you, what the system theory you're doing grew out of cybernetics, be but because of some certain constraints of cybernetics, because they were so focused on 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 on, on the question of control, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but what does this shift now? I mean, what I understood is okay. You want to shift from the human perspective, from the human center perspective, yeah. to a systems perspective, mm -hmm. and yeah. what 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 is what does, uh, what is this, what can we see with this? I mean, this is already a system theoretical approach, I guess, but yeah. what, why, what, why do you, do you want to? Oh, to, well, let me to, tell you, yeah. so there's two questions here. One is, why do you want to? And then the second is, well, what do you get? Yeah, okay. Okay, so. Yeah, exactly. So, um, the reason I wanted to is because, and I know this is the humanistic organization, I, I wanted to remove humans not remove them from the equation, but remove them as explicit, as, as, as elements with explicit mm. human, pr human properties. O obviously, it's totally it's essential. But um, the question is, what could you see? What could you, so, so here, what I, what I would like to get. What, what, could, what, what, what could you get? Our perspective yeah, to technology, what, could, what, what does it change? What, you mean? What, could you, what could you get out of such an analysis that was true re kind of regardless of, of, of what human nature was. And there, there's, certainly, there's certainly some things we would all agree on. We all weigh a certain amount, and so the human race plus all this technology has a certain mass mm. and weighs a certain basic physical things that don't depend on any of this stuff. So the question was, was there some other, can you see some other uh, relations or, or possible in, in endpoints that where you could learn something that was n not that was independent of, of what particular, of what, of, of, of the human per se. And then that would basically be, oh, that means that basically no matter what we do, we have to, res we would have to respect as, as individuals or as the human, as, as humanity would have to, have to respect that. For example, that we are bound and individuals can disagree, but I would challenge them to prove or, or to argue strongly that they could do it, could, could decouple themselves from all this. You can't do it. I would say, well, can't some, some person could be off, go off and be a, a hermit, you know. They could, they, could un, they could throw away their technology and go out and disconnect. They could mean. disconnect. No, you can't. Okay, so a very small number of people could disconnect, but it is a fantastically small number. And because without that system, we, we can't, without this system, the technosphere, we can't survive. Yeah, okay, a few people could survive. Before technology, going back to Stone Age and before human population was, you know, f f a few million, five million, maybe, maybe 10 million. And so, yeah. And you, 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 10, 10 billion people, which is what we're almost at. So you think, I mean, technosphere would then be a notion for a real, for a certain, uh, but a profound rearrangement of humans and non-humans. I mean, technical entities, of course, are non-humans, but of course, uh, they are implied also others. But 
uh, it would be a, a, a <laughs> kind of a stage, a, a, a certain a profound rearrangement. And, and this I rearrangement so. you would call technosphere, no? Mm. We are living in. But yeah. what would it then, uh, what, what I thought, wow, I mean, uh, he's shifting perspective. And uh, I'm also interested, of course, in, sh in shifting perspectives, as I said. And um, what means then to, to, to inhabit or how to, how to say it? Or what means to yeah. inhabit or to dwell in a, yeah. in a technosphere? Yeah. Is this, yeah. Yeah, no. Well, well, I think that's the, that is the kind of the Because key. for Heidegger it was clear, we cannot dwell uh, in a way the technical word because dwelling was always uh, some yeah. kind of a counter notion. Yeah. Um, but but uh, yeah, yeah. is there something like inhabiting the technosphere? Yeah, well, uh, inhabiting the technosphere is basically inhabiting the modern world mm -hmm. of, of the Anthropocene. Mm -hmm. And um, we can just go, you know, every day everybody got here and they're happy with a drink or something and, you know, we're just doing, we're doing a, a thing up here. So you can, cont you, you just do that. So yeah, that's have the most think. easiest thing you mean. So, yeah. so you, c you can always go around and not think about, <laughs> you know, not worry about that stuff. And actually most of the time you have to do that just mm -hmm. to, you know, you go crazy uh, uh, otherwise. But it doesn't mean that there's not some other, you know, forces in the problem. Um, I, th th so... I have to distinguish a little bit between the, do I need to do that? Well, if you, so if you ask the question for, for humans, what is the, uh, how, how, how do you, how do you live in this kind of a, a system under these mm -hmm. kind of conditions? Mm -hmm. Well, the first answer is that you just, well, yeah, the world has a lot of problems, but, uh, you know, tomorrow you get up and do, do, do something probably, you know, somewhat similar to what you did before and, uh, uh, but what, but what about um, climate change? You know, and what about what about these really serious, possibly existential problems? And and climate change is one of them, and all the things that c that that come from that, mm -hmm. uh, all the aspects of it: sea level rise, spread of of plague, and and, and so on. But um, but other th others, there are other things that may not be. You know, maybe maybe very possible and closer than we think, like artificial intelligence, which would be a, in some ways, a significant threat to humanity. Um, I I, th I think what we have to do is to the technosphere. Let me put it this way: the technosphere depends implicitly and completely on human functionality and. Uh, but it's it, but 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 we're in the grip, and we're being brought. You know, mm -hmm. we're being pulled along by it. You can't escape. You know, these the people in the audience cannot walk out the door now. They can't. They probably have tickets. Maybe it costs something, or maybe they're mesmerized by that talk over there. I don't know. But um, you can't. You can't leave. The people in the audience. But you mean well, you know, in no. the 1950s there was uh, in Germany we had a um, there was a discourse about technology. And the big thing was, I mean, this was already in, started in the 1920s. The big thing was, okay, there could something be like an autonomy uh, of uh, uh. technology. And this was the big problem. And I mean, the Nazi project, for example, mm -hmm. was of course, but it's not an example. That's has essentially to do with this question was uh, to, to invent uh, uh, a kind of... Uh, of, of governmentality uh, to, to master technology. And um, uh, it was, you know, it grew uh, to a certain degree, it grew out of this, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, discussion uh, uh, about autonomy of technology. Yeah. And, uh, and, and in the 50s, uh, this came again up. It was the big, you know, it was this, this kind of displacement or decentralization yeah. of the human yeah. was the scandal and the problem. And yeah. that was w uh, what was technology all about. And uh, 50 years later, the interesting point for me is that the same formulation came up in your work, the autonomy of technology, yes. but now it's, in a way, it's nothing scaring. It's something that, uh, that forces us to, to shift 
our perspective, to change our uh, ways of thought, our yeah. strategies, our conceptual yeah, and theoretical that, yeah. strategies. And, so and that's for me uh, one of the most important points. Yeah. Five minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so autonomy is key and you can, working from the principle of survival and so on, you, you, you come to a several of other um, kind of fundamental viewpoints. One is autonomy. That's a very pragmatic it notion of autonomy. It's, no? it's, it's a systems uh, autonomy. Well, but we're part of the system, so it becomes yeah. a little less clear because okay. many people think that we actually control all, all these large technical things going on. And I would no, not say locally we do, mm -hmm. but no, we're actually like a molecule in a wave. We're kind of moved along with the, with, with the wave. The autonomy, however, is not authority necessarily. I mean, locally you have an authority, of course, but uh, autonomy, it means that the system runs itself, but it doesn't necessarily... It has no plan for what humans should do. It's it's the, it's trying to survive. Is doing whatever is in its own best interest, and those have always got to be somewhat aligned with human. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the humans wouldn't be wouldn't be able to function. So I think humans need to. If if humans, if each human could go out of their way to be human, to do, to to. To, to make humans, humans need to be not expendable. If, if, if humans are all alike, they become expendable. That's why soldiers are expendable. The army goes to great lengths to make them all, they wear the mm -hmm. same uniform and so on. Red blood cells in your veins are expendable because they're all identical and, and they wear out and they, you get rid of them easily. Um, but we need to maintain our, 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 our humanity. That's the most mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. chore that we have. So to sum up, I mean, if yeah. one could sum up, I would, uh, I would just say one minute again about uh, that, uh, how the relation about the two concepts. I think technology could really be thought as a kind of expression, not of, I mean, uh, it's a cement, a new historical semantics, I would say, and it is an expression of what you uh, call the technosphere. And it's a consequence of the appearance even of the technosphere and it forces us, mm. what the technosphere is forcing us to do is to, to rethink uh, all scales in an ecological, well, techno-ecological way. That's the yeah, point. Let, let, me, let me just fi finish in the last, last thir 30 seconds that I was amazed when and I worked at some of these technosphere ideas. I was amazed when I was... Uh, so. Like, I was invited here, and then then I was put in contact with you, a philosopher, and I said, "Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I just can't know, know what the contact would be. I know there'll be some, but then you sent me the papers on technoecology. I said, "Oh my God!" You know, and then other ones, that, other writers that you had mentioned, like Bruno Latour and so on. I I read those, and I say, "Oh my God!" And there, actually, in some sense, the philosophers were there first. I think before the, before the scientists and understanding the scope and the nature of the fundamental nature of the of the problem, so I'm really happy to have made that contact and that discovery. Okay, <laughs> thank you for this starting conversation. <laughs>